In this video, we will learn what is preview and debug mode in Google Tag Manager and why it is a must for you to use if you want to properly test your configuration. Hey, my name is Julius and welcome to Analytics Mania's YouTube channel, where you can learn Google Tag Manager and Google Analytics. Google Tag Manager's preview and debug mode allows you to test your setup before it is published. So this means that you can test your tags, triggers and variables before you actually publish those changes live to your website visitors. It's an amazing feature because it allows you to be sure that your setup is working before you hit the publish button. I will show how to actually publish your changes in the next video of this series. So if you have missed the previous videos, I will post the links below this video. And if you want to learn some additional details for beginners about Google Tag Manager, I have a free ebook which is called Google Tag Manager for Beginners. You will find the link to that ebook below this video. All right, so let's dive in. Preview and debug mode in Google Tag Manager is the built-in functionality that allows you to test your implementation before publishing it. So this means that you can test your new setup without having to launch those changes and affect your actual website traffic. To get started with preview and debug mode, first you need to click the preview button right here. And then after you do that, an orange banner will appear at the top of your GTM interface. This is very important. This orange banner must appear on the screen. If it doesn't, most likely some browser extension is blocking third-party cookies or maybe your browser settings are blocking third-party cookies. So if you cannot see this orange banner appear on the screen, I will post the link below the video where you will be able to find a solution and de debug your situation. If you have already enabled the preview and debug mode and you want to preview some changes, you need to click the refresh first and then go to the website and refresh the page. If you cannot see the preview and debug mode appear right here, use the same link below the video to troubleshoot your situation because I have a bunch of situations and solutions for them how to fix your preview and debug mode if it does not appear. The preview and debug mode consists of several parts. The first one is the event stream. So this is what is happening on the page and what is captured by Google Tag Manager. So if you want to track a certain interaction, that interaction first must appear right here. So if you want to track clicks, some click event must appear right here. Want to track form submission, then form submission must appear right here. So if we are talking about the built-in event tracking functionality within Google Tag Manager. So if you want to start seeing link click events right here, you need to have enabled at least one link click trigger in your Google Tag Manager container. Then when you click on each of these events, you can see which tags have fired and which ones didn't. So for example, on container loaded, I have two tags fired and one of them did not fire. Let's pretend that I was actually expecting this tag to fire as well. So if you want to see why this particular tag did not fire, you should choose the event on which you expected that tag to be activated and then click on that tag. When you do that, you can see what kind of information and settings were configured in that tag and also you can see the trigger configuration. So in this case, this is the trigger. And if all of these conditions were met, the green check mark would have appeared right here. And then this tag would have been fired because the trigger conditions would have been met. But in this case, as you can see, this trigger did not fire because first of all, the event is not link click. This is a page view. So page view is not a link click. That's why this condition was not met. And click URL is not matching regular expression where the URL contains either PDF or docx. And this is logical because, well, I haven't clicked any links yet. I have just refreshed the page. So if any of these conditions is not met, then the entire trigger does not fire. Also, if you want, we can check other tags that have fired. So in this case, for example, that is page view. We have clicked the container loaded event. Then we click on that tag and we see that in this case, all of the conditions were met. In fact, there was only one condition in the trigger, which is event name is gtm.js. This is a technical, or we can call it a fancy name for the page view or also known as container loaded. If you want, you can resize the preview and debug mode. If you want to minimize it, you can do that. But if you refresh the page, it will appear once again. In fact, the information in the preview and debug mode stays until the page is reloaded. So for example, right here, we see, well, let me just quickly check. If I click this, this, and this link, you will see three link clicks right here. But if I refresh the page, all of those link clicks are now gone. 
That's how JavaScript works. So every time a page is reloaded, all of the information that was pushed to the preview and debug mode that was visible there, it is now gone and everything starts from the scratch. You can also use preview and debug mode to inspect what kind of information is available with that particular interaction and what kind of variables can you use in your triggers or tags. So for example, let me just quickly click one of these links, but right now I will be holding the control key on my keyboard. And if you are on a Mac, you can hold the command key because once again, if I click it without holding that key, the page reloads and everything starts from the scratch. And I don't want that. I want to preserve my link click information in the preview and debug mode. And we can do that by holding the control key on keyboard or command key and clicking that link. That link is opened in the new tab and the link click information is now visible right here. So let's say that I want to track the menu link clicks on my website. I click one of those links. I actually can click multiple links in the menu and I see now three link click events right here. And if I click it, I should go to variables and inspect what kind of click variables can be useful for me. Of course, if you don't see these variables, you should go to Google Tag Manager and enable them. But once you do that, you should see, well, for example, what can we use? Click classes might look useful because this is site navigation link. So let's check other links and see if they also have the same click class. While some fields have no values and some fields change the value, let's say subscribe, blog, the only variable that remains consistent is click classes. So we could actually, let's say, copy this part and then create a link click trigger where click classes contains this part. If you want to also involve your team members and give them access to the preview mode, but maybe those team members don't have the access to your Google Tag Manager container, you can use the share preview feature. In fact, this is very useful if you're looking for some help online and well, something is not working in your container and you want to get help. So if you do that, please, I highly recommend that you share the link and I will show you how to do that with the community that you are asking to help. So for example, what you could do right now is you can click this link which is share preview. And right here, you should enter the destination URL. This is the URL where the visitor will be redirected. I mean, not the visitor, but the person that you want to share this preview with, that visitor will be redirected to this particular URL. So if I, let's say, if I had HTTPS analyticsmania.com, but of course, I mean, you need to enter the URL of the website where your container is actually implemented. You cannot just enter any random URL right here. And when you enter that URL, this is, the final link of the preview mode that you should copy and then send it to your colleague. Or if you're asking for help in some forum, you should include this URL in that post as well. So when you share this link and another person clicks that link, that person will see this kind of information. And when they click this link, they will open your website and they will also start seeing the preview and debug mode right here, even if they don't have the access to your container. And just by seeing the preview mode will not cause any harm to you because, well, they will not be able to edit anything. They will just see. And after a while, that visitor has done previewing your container and they just want to hide this preview and debug mode permanently, they should revisit the link that you have shared with them and they should click this exit preview and debug mode link. Only then the preview and debug mode will disappear for them. Oh, and one more thing, if you want to preview, for example, what kind of information was sent with your tag. So for example, container loaded and I click on the tag that fired by default, you will see just the name of that variable, but this is not very useful because I would like to see what was the output of that variable. What were the settings inside of that variable? So if you want to do that, you just need to switch to values right here and then you will see what kind of information was stored in that variable in that particular moment. So in this case, we see that G settings variable contained the tracking ID that looks like this. And that was the end of this tutorial. While preview and debug mode has some flaws, it is still one of the most essential parts of Google Tag Manager, at least in my opinion, because even till this day, I don't trust myself when I publish something new. I always try to test that before publishing and I do that with the preview and debug mode of Google Tag Manager. So in a nutshell, always test first, then publish. Verify that everything is working properly and then hit the publish button. I will teach how to publish your container changes in the next video. If you found this lesson useful, I would really appreciate if you clicked the thumbs up button below this video because it helps me continue working on this channel. 
Also, if you want to get some additional tips about Google Tag Manager and Google Analytics in the future, consider subscribing. My name is Julius, this is Analytics Mania, and I'll see you in the next video. Thank you.